Project number three, Demon Sword. For once, we have a very specific image in mind for this commission. We know the exact size, shape, length, width. So I decided to sketch out a life-size version of what we'll be producing. Once I got the image I was looking for, the first step is to get the core, which is made out of a fiberglass rod cut to length. I do this with my multi-tool, spraying it with water to ensure that we don't get fiberglass dust all over the place. I'm cutting up strips of lead to later put into the handle of the sword to give it an overall better balance. This commission is actually for a master 3D printer and as they wanted a very specific style of handle we agreed that they could print it themselves and I'd make sure it was added to the sword. Here I'm just jamming the lead further down to the end of the handle. This section of the core is going to be where the handle sits. So I just need to give it a quick roughen up with a rasp to help the glue stick to it better. Next we cover the core in hot glue and just give it a bash with a hot gun just to keep the hot glue softer for longer to make it easy to position better. Then we seal the bottom of the handle. Next comes preparing the tip so it's safe and flexible. First we grind down some of the tip so that when we add the flexible end it doesn't get wider. We do this by cutting off some fiberglass ribbon and winding it round the end with some cotton. Next we mix up our resin and apply it to the end of the core just where the fiberglass ribbon is attached. And then the rest of the resin goes into the handle making it one solid block and ensuring the lead weight stays where we jammed it. Once the resin's dry we just give the core a quick sand to remove any excess. The next stage is preparing the foam batten which will become the blade of the sword. Because the core is 10 millimeters in diameter you're going to have a central layer of foam 10 millimeters thick with a five millimeter thick layer of foam above and below it. The type of foam I use is a plastic closed cell foam called Plastazote or LD45. I've cut the top and bottom and now I'm cutting out the central piece. We need to make sure to cut out a 10 millimeter wide channel in this layer of foam to allow the core to go through and a little extra for the tip. And next we contact glue. Remember, cover both sides and let it dry. Now we're preparing our foam sandwich. Of course, the bottom layer is the five millimeter, next the 10 millimeter with the core in the center and the final five millimeter on top. So you start off with the five millimeter on bottom with the core centered in the middle. Carefully lay the 10 millimeter on top, making sure to keep it snug to the core. Then you hot glue the core into place. 
making sure to get down into the uh, uh, area that you've just glued together. You don't want the core to slip or else all your work is for nothing. This is not one of those steps that you can go back and bodge later. It's better to add too much than not enough, in my opinion. Can always scrape it off later. When you get to the tip, make sure to first fill the fiberglass ribbon with hot glue and then the entire channel that you've left. Once it dries, this will give you a very flexible, very safe tip for your blade. More contact adhesive for the final part of the baton, putting the top layer on. Lovely. It may seem like a waste of foam, but I always like to make my battens intentionally larger than the sword I'm going to make. This is because when applying the contact adhesive, you don't always get right to the edge all the time. So if you produce a little bit of excess, you can cut it off later, no problem and guarantee that the edges of your blade will be perfect and without any weak parts. Draw a line down the center of the blade. This will make it easier when you're shaping the blade. While you can use a blade to shave down the foam, I find it much better to effectively carve it this way as it creates a much straighter cut, a much straighter result overall. It does require more practice to make sure you get it even and straight. But with a lot of eyeing, a bit more here, a bit more there. Here I'm putting in the uh, curves into the blade. I initially drew out the extents of the curves and then attacked it with my multi-tool. This is a long extended process of taking a bit, giving it a look, taking a bit more, giving it a look. It is a slow process and difficult to get right, but if you're patient and don't take too much off in one go, you'll eventually get to something that you like. Don't be afraid to come back later. If you don't like the final result, you can always start again. The foam you've used is pretty limited and really all you've 
lost is a little time. But you've gained some practice and that's generally more valuable. Now comes the handguard. I start with two bits of foam on either side of the blade, just slightly covering the handle and then drawing on one side roughly the shape I'm looking for. I then trace the shape I've drawn with some acetate, cut it out to allow me to duplicate it on the other side. And then begins the shaping. They're intended to look like horns, so we're aiming roughly for something round and I realise that it's not going to be thick enough, so we add an extra thin layer of foam to make the rounding process easier. shaping, remembering to always make sure that the foam is pointed away from me because of the rotation of the sanding drum. We don't want the foam to catch and rip, do we? Next we need to sand ridges into the guard to give it that natural horned effect. I get the ridges using the corner end of the sanding drum. Next we just need to flatten the middle of the guard so we can attach the final piece to it. When you're making something symmetrical it's always handy to as you can see here just cut out a template for one half of it and copy it over then shape it on my table sander and then using my multi-tool give it a ridge Go back to shaping the blade because it still could do with a little bit of a touch up here and there. And then the contact adhesive. The 
needs a textured effect so we'll just bash it with the multi-tool again and continue tweaking the blade here and there still not satisfied could still do with bits of modification and finally the pommel just cutting out a bit for the end and attaching it with hot glue We get the cut it to the width we want. And then sand it to shape. With the Dremel for the detailed sections. just need to create a bit of a ridge around the bottom of the pommel so we're just attaching that with hot glue and sanding it so it's nice and smooth With my mask on and using a soldering iron, I carve into the foam a oval to represent an eye and down the blade I carve in some lines to represent demonic flame. Okay veins running through the blade. And that's the foam pretty much sorted. I'm happy with the blade. The guard and pommel are sorted. We can get on with the next stage. It gets a bash with the heat gun to seal the foam. and coated in some diluted contact glue to help the latex adhere better. We then add two layers of black colored latex, making sure to do thin coats to ensure that all the detail work isn't lost. You can of course mix any water-based paint into latex. I've used a uh, acrylic. Once the two painted layers of latex have dried, we go for the dunk coat, liberally ladling on latex onto the sword, blowing off any bubbles that accumulate and allowing it to drip dry. With the dunk coat, you have to make sure that any dribbles are caught before they dry, as this will completely uh, mess up your product.
Next, we spray a layer of black colored latex across the entire weapon. And once that's dry, we mask everything except the blade. Then we mix some metallic powder into some slightly blackened latex to give it that metallic effect. You have to make sure you get the right kind of uh, metallic powder. Don't use aluminium powder as that doesn't give it the same effect. It needs to be particularly uh, uh, shiny. Next, we mask specific parts of the weapon and add in some gold powder to some slightly yellowed latex. Stay away from adding metallic paints to latex as I found this can cause the latex to deteriorate after the fact. It seems to have a bad effect on the latex. Next, we paint the pommel white. We need several layers for this because it's difficult to paint white over black. We add a black rim around the bottom to differentiate from the eye and the rim. And then going from yellow to orange to red and darker reds, we create a nice demonic looking eye on both sides of the pommel. Vaguely going for an Eye of Sauron look. And then we add some veins around the edges. And highlight the black in the middle. To ensure that the veins going down the blade pop, we need to first do a initial layer of white to give it more of a contrast to the metallic of the blade. It doesn't have to be perfectly detailed because the look we're going for is quite a natural biological look to give an effect for corruption in the blade. This is after all a demonic blade. Now we're cutting the excess latex. Now that we've finished latexing, we can remove the excess latex from the handle. It comes off easy because we haven't added any glue. And then comes the airbrushing stage. We're going to start with a wide spray of yellow 
over all of the white we've just covered and some of the uh, uh, blade itself. Then we'll go over that in orange, not completely covering all of the yellow areas. And then going over again in red. Once again, just focusing on the main center leaving the tips to show yellow and orange and then darker reds right where that uh, 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 corruption is at its greatest to give it a nice sort of flame effect the a detailed touch here and there or oh, we want it to look really dark then we highlight the gold tips just here and there and there bit of a bash with black just in the crevices to make the prop pop that's the painting done finally the isoflex to seal all the latex. It'll also give it a nice shiny effect. I'll then mask all of the latex so that we can spray the handle with two coats of white undercoat, giving it a quick sand between each coat. And then a spray of brown. And we give it a quick airbrush of black to darken the leather look on the blade now doing the final touches painting the crest on the handle a purple top hat and green for the lizard features with a bit of gold round the edges And to finish it off, a final spritz of lacquer to seal the handle. And there we go. A nice demonic looking blade. Yeah, that'll do.